All right, so uh, I'd like to go over um, a, a big portion of the uh, project. And uh, so I'd like to uh, first put its uh, context um, on what we're lo doing here, and, uh, and then focus on on one of the main uh, features uh, of the project, right? that the, um, the, uh, uh, the various uh, milestones ask you to implement a, a proof of concept, uh, that uh, you build something around, a, uh, a web service uh, API of your choice, and I'd like to focus on that and how that fits in the overall uh, uh, project. Okay. Uh, so, so here, here we are as a uh, user of your uh, web application, um, and uh, and we should be able to navigate to a, a page that we refer to as the home page uh, that um, uh, should give you some. Some uh, historical data, some statistics uh, of the overall website uh, based on whether we know who you are or don't know who you are. Uh, if we don't know uh, who you are, we will uh, give you a, uh, some, you know, some generic uh, rendering of that page. Um, uh, but if we know who you are because you've logged in, uh, then, then we'll give you, a, you know, some kind of specific version of that page. So this will, this page will have two versions, uh, whether we know who you are or we don't know who you are. Okay, uh, if we don't know, it'll be generic, perhaps, um, you know, inf information that that goes across all users, all content, regardless right, of who you are. Uh, whereas if you log in and we know who you are, then we will be something specific to you, uh, maybe your content, right, your uh, your history. Uh, here in the home page. Um, but notice that I can navigate here without having to log in. Right, so if I, if, I log, if I come here and, I, and I, the, the app page doesn't know how, uh, who I am, uh, then this would be the first thing that I see, the generic version of the page. Okay? Uh, but once I log in at some point, then it'll give me the specific version of that same page. Okay? All right. Uh, all right. So, so then, then uh, another uh, the, one of the larger features of the application is that uh, it will provide a, uh, a search capability. Now, the search capability uh, will it, it can it can um, uh, most likely uh, be implemented in a separate uh, view in a separate page, um, uh, or some students prefer to merge these things together, these two pages together, and that will be okay. I, I'll leave that up to you how you want to actually implement it. Um, but, the, but the search uh, can be part of the home page or most likely separate. Uh, if it's separate, then, then I, I would need you know, some, some mechanism to navigate to a search page. Uh, from the search page, the, the search page uh, will have a, at the top top half of the search page or the first third of the page will be uh, some way of creating some um, uh, some search criteria. Uh, it could be as simple as just a single input field with a search button uh, or uh, if you need a more structured uh, search criteria uh, these maybe could be you know some drop downs uh, some input fields depends on depends on your API about your particular domain uh, object, I mean, whatever, whatever your domain is. If you need a structure, then it makes sense to have the uh, drop downs, some, maybe some dates, uh, some some values, some ranges, uh, uh, and, and then the, 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 the bottom half uh, will be the search results of having searched this on the cloud. Uh, when you click on search, uh, what will happen is that your search will be sent over to some some cloud service. Uh, that um, that doesn't belong to you, right? It's somebody else's server with their own database, uh, right? They have their own database. Uh, it it uh, it takes your query as a uh, as a parameter. It searches their database and they they respond to you with a result, uh, typically as an array of JSON objects or XML objects. That's that's your your um, your decision. Um, uh, and then inside of uh, here, you would uh, render some kind of result set uh, laid out any which way you want. It could be a it could be a, a, a table, a tabular format. 
Uh, it could be in a grid. Uh, you choose how you want to lay it out. Right? Uh, typically, these will be accompanied with some, maybe a thumbnail of some sort, maybe a one-line description, uh, maybe a little heart if you want to favor it, uh, maybe some kind of rating. You know, what, again, it depends on your, your domain. Uh, these could be these could represent products. They could represent uh, sports teams. They could represent recipes. They're, they could represent you know doctors in a um, if you're searching uh, you know, a, a, a hospital or something. Uh, you know, depending on your domain object, this will be different. Yes. Okay. Uh, so this this will be a, a summary uh, result set. So this will be something very uh, very terse, very small. Um, if you click on, on any one of these, if you click on any one of these, right, it will take you to a different page, which we'll call the, uh, the details page. The details page. Uh, the details page will take as argument the ID of what you just clicked on. Yes? You clicked on something and uh, the ID is one, two, three. Uh, some kind of argument, either as JSON or um, now what this will do is that the details page using that ID is going to go back to the cloud with that ID, right? And that, and then the API will come back with a result uh, of a of a more detailed version of that object it gave you, right? So these these objects here are kind of like a summary of these objects. Maybe maybe just a title of the movie, maybe uh, uh, you know the the year that it was the, that it came out, and that's it, right? Uh, but if you query it again with the ID one two three, it might come back with a with a bigger object uh, that might have the plot of the movie, maybe the director, the the uh, uh, the uh, the actors, um, thumbnails, a lot of a lot of posters, and you will use that to dynamically render your page. Okay. Okay. Make sense. Uh, and you should be able to navigate back to the search, uh, the search page, make another search query, and then go back to the details page. Notice that nowhere here have I logged in. Right? I haven't said who I am. There's no, the, the, the system has no idea who I am, and I haven't forced you to log in. And, and uh, most, most of your applications should behave that way. Okay? Give you a mechanism to use your application without having to log in. Not until I need to know who you are, not until I need to know who you are, should I challenge you with, with uh, authentication. Um, so when do I need to know who you are? Well, if you, if you, if you have a, uh, uh, a favorite, if you click on a favorite, uh, or if I try to enter a, a comment or review, or if I, if I have to provide any data to the system, then I need to know who you are. I, I need to be able to associate uh, this particular object, one, two, three, associated with somebody right? to know that this person generated that data. I need to create a, an association. And for that, I need to know, I need to know who you are. Uh, so if I try to uh, rate it or comment it or favorite or in some way generate some relationship with me, uh, then it should, it should challenge me with some kind of login page where I can type in my username and password or or use Google or Facebook or somehow identify myself. Yes. Uh, once I've identified myself, then it can come back and let me, you know, finish what I was trying to do in, of favoring and whatnot. Everyone okay? So, so these three, at least these three pages, should be open to everyone without having to log in. Okay. Uh, but if I do log in, I will have additional places to go. For instance, uh, maybe in the header of each one of the pages, you might give me a link to navigate to my profile page. Now that I am logged in. Okay? Uh, once I am logged in, I can go to my profile page and I can see uh, my, my image, a description about myself. Okay, so some static uh, profile information plus uh, I should be able to see any information that is associated to me somehow. 
if I've liked a movie or if I've commented a movie or I've created any data, right, I should have access to it somewhere. Right? Uh, one place to put it is in the profile. Right? So for instance, if, I, if I've liked this recipe, then here I can, I can have a, you know, a, a section, you know, something like uh, my favorite recipes right? and a list of all the recipes that I like. Make sense? Maybe, uh, again, this could be a, a summary, like maybe just one single line per recipe, not the actual recipe, but a, 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 a title of the recipe maybe, maybe a, little, maybe a little thumbnail next to it. If I, if I click on that recipe, I should be able to navigate back to the details page because I have the ID of that recipe. Like I should be able to say ID one, two, three, and see the same exact recipe that I saw earlier, right, when I, when I first navigated to it. Make sense? Uh, now, that information is not stored here. I, I am not storing any information about the, 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 the recipe. The only thing I'm storing about that recipe is the ID in my database, right? Because I can always regenerate this page dynamically just with the ID of the recipe, right? I can always go back to the cloud, right, and retrieve the details for that recipe. Make sense? Right. Uh, so, so any information that I that is associated to me, like for instance, I am associated now to that recipe, I need to store somewhere, right? So typically. The way we're going to store it is that we're going to keep track of, in the database, we're going to keep track of uh, a collection of users right, and a collection of the domain objects, whatever they are. Right? So in this case, the domain object might be a recipe or my favorite team or my, favorite, my movies, my whatever, whatever the domain objects are. Say my domain object is a movie. So this will be a collection of movies. Yes? So if I, if I like the movie, I need to store that somewhere that this person likes that movie. There's several ways of doing it. Uh, let's use a classical way of, of creating that, that relationship. Typically, uh, we would store it in a, maybe in a likes table. In a likes table that says, Create a record here that says that this user likes that movie. Yes. Uh, hopefully, the record for the user already exists because I are either registered, right, uh, and I'm, I'm logged in. So hopefully, that record for that user exists in the database. What this, but the record for the movie might not exist. <laughs> Because I might be the first person who has liked that movie in my uh, application, yes? So there is no record for that movie. So I need to be smart and check to see if the movie does not exist, the record for that movie does not exist, I'll need to create that movie if it's the very first time that that movie has ever been liked, yes? So we'll, we'll create the record for the movie. All right, so what do we store in that movie? Well, as I... Uh, at least we'll know, we'll need the ID of the movie. At least the ID of the movie. So we'll store the ID of the movie. Plus, we might store here a couple other things. I only really need the ID. That's the only thing I really need to store the one, two, three here. Right? But let's get back to that in a minute. For now, let's just have the ID one, two, three. Yes? Uh, I want to store that this person, who the curly logged in person, has liked this movie. So I would make a record here. We'll make another insert saying that user uh, u1, user1, so u1, likes movie 1, 2, 3. So this creates an association between these two records. Right? It says that, that this user is associated to that movie. Right, and the association is called likes. Right, so this user likes that movie. Right, and this is a classical way of implementing it. Uh, MongoDB has a couple of other ways of doing it, and we'll talk about that when we look at databases, but this is a classical way of creating it, right? creating some mapping table that relates to records. Uh, now, when I visit my profile, 
uh, I can create this list. Right? I know who's logged in. The, it's the profile of user one, U1. I can query my database and say, ooh, uh, I am logged in as user 1. Who does user 1 like? I can query this, this collection. It'll come back saying, ah, the user likes uh, movie 1, 2, 3, movie 2, 3, 4, movie 3, 4, 5, all these movies. So 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5. I can now take those three and generate my table, my, my, my uh, likes table here. Yes? OK. Uh, but the only thing I have is an ID. So, it'll, so uh, uh, that's not going to be enough to render my table here for the only with the IDs. Yes? But no worry, I can always go back to the plow with, that, uh, with, that, with the IDs and retrieve the title, maybe a thumbnail. Yes? Right? But it'll be very chatty. I'm going to have to iterate and go back to the cloud at least three times. Yes? It'll be very, very expensive to generate this one table. Correct? Right? Now, to generate this one details, I'll have to go to the database, to the, to the cloud only once. And, but that, that makes sense, right? Because I, I'm, I'm pulling down tons and tons of data. Over here, to generate this table, I only really need maybe the thumbnail and the title. Right? So it'll be very expensive to go out to a database only for two attributes. Okay? So what we're going to do here is that instead of just storing the ID of the movie, we're also going to cache a couple of other things. Right? We're going to cache maybe uh, the thumbnail right? uh, as, a, as a URL, and we'll store maybe the title of the movie. Enough information that will allow us to render this table without having to go back to the to the database uh, to the cloud to retrieve that. Yes, right. Uh, ideally, we we want to keep this very tiny of what we're caching in our local database. Correct, because whatever we have here in our local database is only ever going to be a subset of what is the truth. The truth lives lives in the cloud, right. They own the database. They are responsible to make sure that what you know that they that the data that the data they, they that they own is accurate. Right? We're not going to try and compete with them. Okay? If Google says you know that that's true, then I trust Google. Right? So what I do instead is I only cache enough information here, you know, for just you know for uh, for convenience purposes. Okay? Right? Uh, so that's, that's the uh, profile, allows me to uh, create these relationships, uh, allows me to store this information. Um, uh, what else? Let's see. Uh, it should allow me also to, uh, to uh, uh, manage the life cycle of each one of these objects and these relationships. I might, I might say that I don't like it anymore. Right? So I should be able to unlike it. right? And, and, so, and so the record will be expunged, right? It will remove it and say, no, this user no, no longer likes that, that, that movie. Uh, doesn't mean I'm going to go and remove the movie from the database because somebody else might like it, right? It could be that some other user likes the same exact movie. Yes? Right? Uh, so that means that if some other user likes it, user number uh, four, Right? There'll be some other record here that, that says user number four likes the same movie one, two, three. There's only one record for movie one, two, three, right? But there might be many likes. Yes? So in this architecture, how do you ensure that whatever you are caching and that movie and your database is not scaled from the Exactly. That that's the reason we want to keep this very, very tiny. Right? The more you cache here, the more likely it is that you're going to stale. But whatever you have is going to be stale. Whatever we cache, uh, even, even if it is a thumbnail or uh, yep. any, anything that we cache, but at As a risk of time, if we, are, if we don't have a system of uh, replacing, uh, refreshing this yep. cache that we have on a time-to-time -time basis, yeah, exactly. then how do we ensure that? Um, it, it might be that you, know, you have a monthly uh, job, right, that its responsibility is to go back to the database, iterate over this table, right, so and go to the API and retrieve all these things, all the new versions of these things. But that's not the response. That we're not going to do that in the, in the project. But yes, in the real in real life, you're, if you're trying to keep 
in sync with somebody else, you'll need to run those kinds of jobs. Yep. Uh, did that make sense? Right. So, so, so I like to uh, uh, focus today on on implement. I'm looking at this here. We'll try to implement something like this today, uh, just to give you an idea on what that looks like. Right. Some of you have come to me that uh, you were somewhat concerned uh, with that uh, uh, proof of concept that's coming up um, that you need to build, uh, and uh, and that you should have already. Identify what they, the API that you're going to be using, right? And how to create a, a harness that uh, that can test uh, the use cases that use that, that that hit your database and, and implement something like this. For the for the uh, for the proof of concept, I'm sorry for the API uh, um, assignment, uh, you're going to have to create um, something that allows you to query and receive. <laughs> Uh, responses and iterate over the result sets and create a details page uh, for for that for that assignment. So so let's focus on implementing something like that. All right. 